Hi everyone, welcome back to another episode of Keep It Simple. Yes, Pris, what are we going to talk about today? Uh, we're going to talk about our special guest. Yeah, <laughs> we have Mona Bong here on the on the show with us today. Hi. And we're going to talk about, hi. Yeah, today we're going to talk about um basically what it's like to be a content creator. Yeah. Keep it simple. Um, so, I guess before we start, why don't you just introduce yourself? First? What's okay. your story? What's Mom. my story? Yes. I don't yes. have a lot of stories, but <laughs> hi everybody, I'm Mong. Uh, my name is Mong Chin actually, but I go by the online Monica Monga Bong and uh, I do beauty content, fashion content, lifestyle content on Instagram, YouTube, and sometimes on TikTok oh, <laughs> as well. Yeah, so oh, that's basically on, it. Yeah, everyone's on TikTok <laughs> nowadays. Yeah, <laughs> I try because I'm a bit old for that, lah. But right, yeah. right. But I mean, I would imagine that you can do all those like you know those makeup tutorials. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. But I mean, at the start, it was mostly dancing, which I I couldn't. What? So <laughs> yeah, I was gonna ask about that. No. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, it looks easy, but it's really not. When you try to groove, cannot. I, I probably I did imagine. not look great. <laughs> you tried? Uh? Yeah, just try, just try. Oh, okay. oh, I thought you like, had an actual... Okay, never mind. So I haven't made my TikTok de- debut yet. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um. Yeah, so we all know you as Monga Bong, right? Yeah. Um, but let's go into uh, uh, Mong, the person behind the, the Monica, right? So what okay. was... Tell us more about yourself. Like, what was your career path before this? Mm. Who were you before you became the... <laughs> the prelude, wait. The, I the like that you kind of yeah. gave me a body <laughs> wave. Like. <laughs> okay. So, um, I think I started full time. Okay, I started full time right after I graduated. Um, I studied accountancy in SMU, so that's what my degree is. Um, and I would say, yeah, I did kind of take the unconventional path of choosing to, you know, do something that you know, I I wasn't familiar with, not what I studied. Mm. So uh, before that, yeah, I was studying for four years in SMU, but um, I was also part-timing, like with some online blogshop modeling Mm. and also some content creation. So um, I was doing it about two years, like part-time studying while, you know, doing my other modeling stuff. Mm. And then it was time to graduate and I decided that you know, like it, it would be quite a waste to give the two years up and I never gave myself a chance to truly experience how it would be like if I fully dedicated my attention and my energy to do this as a full-time job. Uh, so I gave myself two years and I was just like, okay, you know, if in two years um, I still can't, I mean, I'm still mm-hmm. struggling, then it's time for me to to, to think of something else, uh, you know, mm-hmm. and yeah, maybe yeah. go back to something that I studied. Yeah, so... It's been <laughs> it's 2016, <laughs> uh, five years now. Oh, so nice. I haven't looked back since. Nice. Yeah, it's been. I've been doing it full time, five oh, years. Nice. She's still here, everyone. <laughs> still creating content. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Now you know about the Hmong before she got the Abong. <laughs> <laughs> Not sure why that sounds a bit. It's uh, very weird. <laughs> Is it just me? I don't think. So. <laughs> yeah. Um. I'm sorry for that, but. Yeah. <laughs> Okay, but um, I would imagine that, you know, learning about accountancy and everything, it would mm. have informed or helped you to manage your finances better. Yes, would you say that? Uh, yeah, <laughs> but we kind of studied it like in a very like big scale, you know, mm. like managing millions of money uh-huh. on like paper, you know, like <laughs> yeah. they were preparing us for like big corporations and stuff. So yeah, I mean... I would say it's quite relevant Mm. in our daily lives and especially now that I'm running my, I mean, I'm doing my own thing, right? Yeah. Um, Yeah. It is quite relevant, but Mm. (laughs) I didn't need to study four years for that. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, (laughs) you heard it here first. (laughs) Don't need to study four years for it. (laughs) I mean, for the level that I'm doing now. Yeah, yeah, of course. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, I would think so too. So do you think that you would have managed your finances like differently if you had not studied? Like accountancy. No, actually, oh, not really? really. Yeah. Oh. Okay. So, um, backstory. I'm quite a thrifty person mm-hmm. to begin with, lah, because I wasn't kind of born. I mean, I wasn't born with much, and uh, you know, my parents are very normal people. My dad worked overseas, so breadwinner, and I had to just you know make my own keep since I was a student. Mm-hmm. So yeah, actually, still till today, I still am quite, I guess, thrifty in some sense. So there aren't any special tips <laughs> or anything that I, I, I did differently or I learned from school. Yeah. Mm, okay. 
Wow, I was like hoping for some like secret code, like something, you know, to like, like keep my finances. <laughs> but I guess it's secret just secret code. Don't spend. Yeah, I think <laughs> that was not what I was looking for. But yeah, okay. I, don't think, I don't think you will find it, Chris. We've been through a lot of podcast episodes. I don't think you will find it. I mean, the very baseline <laughs> is don't spend more than what you make, right? So yeah. that is the. Yeah, that's not one an answer one. I wanted. I wanted Wait, to be like, you know, <laughs> <laughs> I wanted like, oh, we go to this secret fountain somewhere. Mm. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. So actually, I, I can't. I mean, what you say is like, oh, you took something like a gap year or like a just a period of time to really go for like pursue this yeah unconventional, uh, career. I guess yeah. Um, but how was the transition period like? Actually, I mean, I, I didn't take any gap year. Mm-hmm. It was just uh, in my final year of university where I really thought about this more seriously mm-hmm. because it's the final year. I need to think yeah, about yeah. what I'm going to do after I graduate. Yeah. And thankfully, you know, I had planned my, my uh, modules in such a way that I would have the least workload in mm-hmm. my final SEM. That's what most people do because I think they want to take this time to look for jobs and they also want to take this time to either relax or whatever, you know, before like their working life actually starts. So that was how I planned my modules. And thankfully, I was able to only take three classes a week Mm -hmm. and I was able to dedicate the rest of my, you know, four other days of the week to try to do this like proper, you know, like instead of having to only one, two hours a day to try to run to a shoot to do this and then like study for the rest Mm -hmm. of the day. Uh, but I got four days a week to do that for about six months. So that's when I kind of had a good gauge of whether mm. or not it would be a sustainable lifestyle. Right. Um, yeah, in terms of everything like physical, mentally or like financially as well. Mm. Mm. Right. Mm. Uh, at least you give like a, like a, a bit like, right? yeah, it was yeah, like yeah, a, yeah. A, little, <laughs> a little test yeah. yeah, to see whether or not like it's, it's possible because I think six months is a... Uh, it's not too long, but it's, it's not too short mm. also just mm. to be able to have a good gauge. Yeah, that's like, true. Mm. Just, yeah. just an additional question. Yeah, yeah, yeah. How did your parents feel about it? Because, oh. you know, mm, Asian yeah, parents. Okay. <laughs> I don't even no. explain it to them, <laughs> yeah. actually. Okay, yeah. because it's quite gradual, ma. Yeah. You know, I've been doing this like two years like before I graduated. So mm-hmm. they it was not anything new to them. But uh, like I mentioned, my dad actually worked overseas. So mm. he worked in China for about 10 years. And in China, actually, the social media scene over there was like much more advanced than Singapore at that time. Mm-hmm. Uh, so he really saw like, you know, they call them Wang Hong, correct? Like he really saw like how those uh, Wang Hong really made made it into a viable, sustainable career and are doing super well. So mm-hmm. he was actually very supportive of that. Oh, of, yeah, yeah, of like my decision. <clears throat> Whereas for my mom, she was a little bit hesitant, but you know, my, my dad has the, I mean, my dad convinced her like, pretty yeah, yeah, much yeah. and said like, don't worry, I think, you know, as long as, as long as she works hard and she <clears> has a degree, you know, yeah, it's, it's, say, it's least, not yeah. like that bad. Like, yeah. 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 Oh, so understanding. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> but at least she got a degree. I think that would be oh. like, that would reassure if I were, if I were a parent, I suppose. Yeah, I mean, it's know? not as if yeah. I, I was true, saying true. like, you know, I want to quit school now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, I think that would be much harder to fight for. Correct, right. Okay, yeah. okay, I understand, I understand. Well, yeah. it, it worked out. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I believe in I you. Hope, you I hope that. <laughs> I hope it did. I yeah. don't know. I think you're doing pretty well for yourself right now, right? Thank so you. So this is your this is your main. main yeah, job, this is basically. my main job. Right. Yeah. Uh, so do you have a plan B? Do you still think things will oh. like go south one day? Yeah. Well, actually, yeah. because okay, I'm 28 this year, so mm. I'm no longer young, and I'm also kind of like thinking of starting a family soon, mm. right? So. I don't think this is called plan B. This was all part of the plan. But uh, one of the reasons why I decided to, you know, not go into the corporate world first thing is because I want to be a stay-at-home mom. Mm. Like once I have my kids, you yeah. know, at least for the first few years. And I don't want to be in a place where it's very difficult for me to leave. And I don't want to feel that kind of guilt when oh, I yeah. Yeah. decide not to leave for my child or whatever. I mean, if everything's hypothetical. I'm not pregnant yet. Like, <laughs> not pregnant yet. She's not. Uh, she's not. Uh, you she's don't not take it out of context. Uh. <laughs> yeah. So, um, yeah. So that's why... This is not really plan B, la, but it's more of like a transition that I had uh, always, you know, for, I, I mean, I always, I always foresee this transition, la, you know, of being a, a mom and slowing down mm. uh, my work as well. 
and just transitioning to more mummy things and just mm. taking it as it comes. Right, right, right. Yeah. So uh, not not really a plan B, but mm. hopefully. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Do you ever think about like um I mean right now it's mostly sponsorships and stuff, mm, right? Mm. Do you ever think about, you know, coming up with other income streams? Like I don't know, you can do like consulting for social media. Actually stuff. we do, you know. Oh. Like uh I do a bit of consulting work. Mm-hmm. It's just that we don't post it publicly. Ah, right. Mm. Okay, okay. Okay. Um, I mean, not, but, but we still do it in the, how do you say, like in the, as a position of an influencer. So they are consult, like brands do come to us and, and invite us to uh, sometimes their seminars, their marketing workshops that they have with like, you know, their global marketing teams. And they ask our advice on this upcoming campaign. Like, what do we think uh, mm. can be done better mm. and as an influencer um, you know is this something that you would do how can we make it more viral how can we uh, reduce the amount of red flags or uh, if there's any red flags you know and stuff right. like that. so we actually do just that um, not very publicly la. Ah, mm. okay okay mm, yeah, so <laughs> yeah nice. but I mean other income streams Maybe, I don't know, start my own brand someday. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah, what's yeah. the answer? You're, you're going to start your own like, blog shop or like, um, you know, like clothing line. <laughs> I mean, we, right now we are working on collaborations uh-huh. because it's a lot more, I guess like, it, I mean, when there's a collaborative effort, mm-hmm. it's much better in terms of like just sharing the risk and like having a flow of transferring of ideas and everything as well. So. Uh, that's the way that I've been approaching it, lah. You know, collaborating right. with a uh, fashion brand, and we're in the second collection. We're doing the second collection now, as well. Uh, this local brand called Levet, so we're gonna do a Mong X Levet <laughs> too. Oh, yeah, yeah, waiting for it. Oh, really? <laughs> I'm waiting for it. Oh, yeah. yeah, that's cool. All right, let's talk about <clears throat> your, uh, I guess, sponsorships. Yeah. Yeah. So. Uh, generally, okay, so I don't really follow influencers, I'm sorry to say. No, no, I mean like, I, I like, scroll, <laughs> scroll, you know, I'm sorry, I... Got a cut, like, self-exposed. Yeah, I just have to be yeah. honest, okay, I have to okay. be honest. Like, I do... Apply your honesty. Yeah, yeah thank you, fine. thank you. Yeah, no, but I will follow you. Uh, <laughs> don't kill me! <laughs> yeah. So, um, so, uh, yeah, so it... My impression is that you know mm-hmm. they, they sponsor your post, so mm. they pay you X amount of money, or you get like free stuff, right? Yeah, yeah. Right. So, mm. um, are there? How how has the experience been like? Have you been like? Have you had like, I don't know, like nightmare sponsorship <gasps> stories? Nightmare one. Yeah, one. looking yeah. specifically for nightmares. Yes, <laughs> we're looking for the tea. <laughs> Actually, not really, because I think a lot of clients are very understandable these days mm-hmm. and they really respect the voice of the content creator because because they realize that i mean in the past maybe they're a little bit more unaware at, at the start where they really want you to stick very closely to a brief mm-hmm. you know but yeah. a lot of the times it's still up to the influencer to kind of push back and be like this is not something i would say yeah, so, and most of the time when you do that, they will respect you uh, because, mm. you know, it's like, yeah. why would they, why would they, you know, be like, no, and then, <laughs> then I would say no to, I would say no to taking that job up also, you see, and yeah. like, it's usually cool, it's usually cool, okay, yeah, okay. they will respect the, uh, you know, the tone of your voice because they also know that that's what your followers have been following you for. Well, I guess last year was kind of like a different year, right? Very. For all influencers <laughs> as yes. well. So like, how yes. do you think like COVID um, mm. like impacted your business? Yeah. Good and bad. Uh, because bad, because I think marketing is definitely the first place they would cut the budget. Mm. Because when you're yeah. trying to keep the business afloat, that's the last thing you yeah. want to think about. Mm. So we had to, I mean, we, we practically had zero work or zero income. Mm. Uh, for a good three months, two, three months, most of us. Uh, but the good thing was because our job is online. Right. So in terms of like logistics or anything, like there weren't that many. I mean, there were still a lot of things we could still do. Mm. But of course, you know, people weren't paying us, but we could still create content and, you know, still uh, use that time to kind of brush up on our editing skills or, you know, spend more time communicating with our followers and things like that. Mm. Right. Okay. Yeah, but what about like, so I want to ask about 
before the pandemic, right? Pre COVID. So as a content creator influencer, how do you like ensure you have a steady stream of mm. work coming in? Do you have Okay. A uh do of... I have uh, did, did you... <laughs> sorry, sorry, was that a very combative tone? No, 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 no. Sorry. So you have more? No, 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 no. no. Okay. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah no no so uh, pre pre covid mm. yeah um <clears throat> yeah actually i mean i think if as long as you're in the freelance or creative side of work right nobody in this world can say that you can ensure yeah. anything like especially if you're working for yourself there's no way to ensure it what you know so i choose to kind of look at it like okay how i, I kind of i choose to look at how am I able to create more value to, you know, people that follow me or people who might potentially engage me? Mm. Yeah, so uh, there will definitely be slower months where I have less work, but that also means I have more time, right? Mm. So, yeah. and time is essentially money as well uh, to yeah. me because, you know, take this time to uh, research more, take this time to kind of brush up on our editing skills, mm-hmm. even if it means going for a team bonding retreat mm. i think there's a lot of value in yeah. in that as well mm. yeah i would imagine that you know sometimes maybe for those months where you don't have any like, mm. uh, dry months i guess um i guess that means you would have you would need your finances like well in place la, like your fundamentals correct correct so you do have like emergency funds saved up definitely i like said i'm net. a very thrifty person very good, very good. <laughs> Yes. Yeah. Simple some endorses this. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Emergency yeah. funds mm. do it. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I wanna ask so like uh, uh, because I mean I think Pris can relate to this and I also can mm. because I used to do like copywriting as a freelancer also. So mm. I wanna ask about like your rates. So how did how did you how do you determine your rates? Is that like a, mm. Is that a secret rate? formula? Actually, no. Yeah. It's a very uh like a taboo thing i feel like nobody mm. really asks around okay right. fellow content mm. creators you don't mm. ask around because right. it's so sensitive right mm. so how i determine it um is when actually it's just by feeling one so i, I okay like i said i had um uh, an <laughs> agency yeah. at the start mm. so i already kind of knew oh. the base market rate right. okay i mean you do the math yourself you just kind of take away the the cut that they were taking mm-hmm. then how, this is the amount of money brands will be paying for this number of followers or this mm. number of like this tier for mm. example and then as you slowly move along then you start increasing law and then like, I, I, I would increase like maybe 100 200 then i realized like eh, I, I, I start getting more brands come on mm. board and they're okay with the price then i'm just like is it because I'm charging too cheap? <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, it's really yeah. a feeling kind of thing. And mm. like some people, you know, like not everybody follow a strict like, oh, I have 1,000 followers means I will charge this amount mm. because uh, definitely some people put in a lot more effort and require a lot more mm. costs to create whatever type of content. And there are so many different types of content. Yeah. For example, like if you do videos, it's way more work than mm. shooting an Instagram photo. Yeah. Correct? That's because true. there's editing and there's mm. color correcting and like, you know, just wrecking of place and everything. Yeah. yeah. So it's just, it's just like that law. So mm. even if you have same 1,000 followers on YouTube, 1,000 followers on Instagram, I would charge higher on the YouTube side mm. because there's a lot more work and costs mm. yeah, required. Right. Yeah. Mm. So I guess just what makes sense to you. Correct. As long as you don't lowball yourself. Yeah. yeah. I, I yeah. mean, you don't even know whether you're lowballing <laughs> yourself. Okay. Then I guess you just need to have faith. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I heard a saying once is uh to charge um not so low that you feel that uh you're a slave <laughs> or like you're oh. working for something that you don't you are not getting enough money for. And, but don't charge so high that you feel scared that like what if they find out that I'm a fraud like, oh that kind of thing. You, you know that kind of thing it's like, what? I, 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 like like you know you don't charge too high that you don't feel like um imposter syndrome almost mm. oh. yeah so of course kind of, la. yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean I mean honestly uh sometimes <laughs> when I charge something that actually is the market rate I felt that before so mm. I, I'm not sure. Maybe yeah, I you guess just need to have more faith in your work. Maybe, mm. maybe. Yeah. Because yeah. after all, you spend all these years, like you know, honing your skills. Like yeah. all these amount to something. Yeah, true. Mm. So yeah, yeah, and 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 if if you find yourself getting a lot of rejections, then okay lah. Then <laughs> yeah. you reflect. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> 
yeah. Mm. Okay, okay. That's yeah. a better. That's a better yeah. piece of advice. Than <laughs> yes, me. yes. I think it's yeah. You know, if you're on your tenth rejection for the week, it's like yeah. okay, okay. Oh, reflect, yeah. reflect. <laughs> Time to relook at the numbers. <laughs> yeah. So you're currently working with a small team. Yes. yes. So I have a team of. I mean, plus myself four. Mm. Correct. Yeah. So when did you when did you decide that you needed more hands? On Ooh, deck? Like, yeah. good question. Yeah. Hmm. I got my first. I think okay. I had my first like help la, intern. Mm. We call them. Mm-hmm. Uh, twenty seventeen. So that was one year after I started full time. Oh. Yeah. Okay. Because I was doing everything by myself, mm. and um, that was also when I started my YouTube channel. That and you know I studied accounting la, So. Photos, editing photos, using like Rule VSCO Cam is like okay, still manageable. Yeah, but yeah. when it comes to really video editing, like diving into it for someone with zero background is really, really, really tough. Yeah. And I had to learn everything via YouTube, like mm. how to cut, <laughs> how to transition. You know, I was really, I was really struggling a lot with it. And even though I learned quite a lot, but I was still taking a long, long time to produce a video. So that was when I decided that, okay, I think I need help. Uh, it's much better to hire someone that studied this and this is like, you know, their live and breathe thing. Yeah, Whereas for true. me, like, <laughs> rather than I struggle <laughs> over there. And, you know, and I was just thinking, okay, opportunity cost. Mm. And it'd be nice to finally have a colleague. Yeah. I don't have to eat lunch by myself every oh, day yeah. anymore. Oh, <laughs> yeah, so that was why. Yeah. Things they don't tell you about being an influencer. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Eat oh, lunch oh, alone, oh, eh. I'll be, yeah. I'll be <laughs> Self-employed, <laughs> law, you yeah. know. Like, when yeah. you work for yourself, that's the reality. Yeah, mm. that's true. Right, right. Well, it's nice to have company. Yeah. Always. Yes, of course. Yes. Yeah. So that was when I hired my first one. Mm. Mm. Okay, okay. What's it like being a, a boss? boss? Yeah, yeah. what would... <laughs> Do you have to have the hard conversations? Yeah, well, okay. very hard. What's the, best thing, what's the best thing and the worst thing about ah, being okay, the okay. boss? Ah. Yeah. yeah. Okay, best thing is, um, I guess you have, like, the time and attention of like you know your your subordinates <laughs> <laughs> of your team la, of your team yeah, yeah, yeah. like you you feel very supported mm. yeah and and you don't have to deal with anything i, I mean everything by yourself mm-hmm. so that's that's definitely it. of course that you know being able to have fun while working um mm. it just adds so much more life and character to the job mm. you know you don't see it as just a job anymore like i see it as like oh today i have uh food tasting mm. even though it is kind of part of the job but we also i mean seeing them like being very happy about having this perks to the job mm. like makes me yeah. very very happy that i'm able to provide for them that way yeah, yeah so i think those are the things that money cannot buy mm. uh, of course the hard part i mean mm. the worst thing about being a boss is when uh, okay for me i'm very non-confrontational mm. So I find it super difficult to kind of point out like when they are not doing something correctly. Right. Yeah, and I will try to be very subtle about it, <laughs> but I think they cannot catch it. Also okay. because we have a very good relationship and I mean, all of us have like super good relationships. Uh, so mm. maybe sometimes they will just take me a bit too lightly. Uh, like, right. Yeah. <clears throat> like, how, how do you mm. do it subtly? That they will take it lightly. Like, like, for example, I don't know. I don't know. We can role play. We can role play. We can role play. So, so Prince is the good intern. I'm the bad intern. I didn't mean bad. Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> and then I like, I like shooting it out. Then she's just like, ah, uh, it's like something. Okay. <laughs> you think just doing this is a bad intern? Man. I don't know. Like, I don't know. Okay, okay. 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 Really, for example, okay, I had um uh, an intern once who was always late. Always, like mm-hmm. I think for the three okay. months that she interned mm-hmm. for me, she was on time once. Oh no. Once. Okay, okay. Yeah. Wow. So, okay. and I was always waiting for her, like maybe five minutes up to one and a half hours. Wow. Yeah. One and a half every hours. day. Can you imagine every day? One yeah. and a half hours is. <gasps> yeah. Yeah. So I was really, really like, okay, I really don't know how to like bring it up to her. Like, can hey, you don't be late, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I, I, I started off with like a, hey, where are you? And then, uh, well, you know, I'm sitting here, like, <laughs> waiting for you alone. I'm very lonely. Okay. <laughs> so I started by, like, saying like that. And then right, she would right. say, like, I'll be there soon. Oh. So, like, okay, I think she doesn't get it. That, like, oh, okay, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Mm, I'm telling her that she's gay. Maybe you should have said you were lonely. <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay. Then after that, I moved on to, like, wow, I, uh, I've been waiting and I've been parking here. So sometimes, oh. like, we would shoot around CBD area. Yeah. And then parking is, like, maybe, like, $6, $7 an hour. Yeah. 
And then like I was like, wow, I is it wow the amount of is it the amount of parking fees I've paid waiting for you? I think you you should treat me to lunch. Mm. Then she then she just say, wow, well, this is daylight robbery. Yeah, correct. Yeah. Uh, robbing you. Yeah, robbing you. She's not returning the money. Yeah, I don't want to say it. I don't want to say it. I don't want to say it. Okay, so I really. Yeah. Very, I, I said it was a very casual kind yeah, of yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, yeah. It was very casual because mm. on. Every day we are having a lot of fun, right, you know, right, and yeah. like I don't know how to be stern, um, and it's just not. I, I even if I try, they don't take me seriously. I think. Yeah. Yeah. Nah. So I'm still mm. learning, like Every day, I, yeah. I think I'm better now mm-hmm. because, yeah. uh, yeah. I mean, I've had like a a fair share of very good interns mm. and also a fair share of really bad uh mm. working experiences mm. as well, mm. uh, So I learn from these working experiences and and like learn how to navigate and mm. try to what one thing I learned is to kind of nip it in the butt when I start to see red flags. Uh, yeah. yeah, yeah so that I don't have to yeah. be like super in your face when mm. a, something blows over. Yeah. yeah. Like blows up. Yeah. Mm. It's like, so mm. oh. in in too deep. <laughs> Correct. <laughs> yeah. In too deep in the car park, yeah like yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the sun is setting and like should be here, should be here. <laughs> it's okay. <laughs> How should I address this? <laughs> yeah. And and the way is like and I'm so awkward when she comes like, hi and I'm just like, oh hi. <laughs> like I was like, okay, you know, I'm just not gonna bring it up. Oh, like man. let's just get on with the shoot. Right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 So boss, uh, so do you have an office? <laughs> <laughs> boss, I'm scared. Not scared but, but I do. Yeah. Uh, I mean, we work out of a co-working space. Right. Uh, one of the WeWorks works lah. Yeah. Mm. So how long have you been working at the out of that, wow, that space? It's been quite long. Eh. I think three years. Yeah, the oh. same space. Uh, but because we really, really like this the space. Yeah, mm. it's very beautiful yeah. and very. I mean, we're very used to it, and the people yeah. around there are super nice. So yeah. yeah. Mm. But before that, you were like working out of your own home, is it? Like your interns will go there and uh, your No, team? like we usually just meet up to shoot. Then they'll go back to edit. Like oh, they go home to edit. Okay, yeah, okay. so that was in the past. But I realised that it was very inefficient. Mm. Yeah, and <clears throat> sometimes even if we wanted to sit together to work, uh, you know, we can only look at like, you know, Starbucks or like some other cafes and it's very inconvenient to yeah. Yeah. to find like power plugs and yeah, correct, find correct. a stable internet connection. So that was when when I hired my second one, that was when I decided that actually it would it, it's good to have like a central place where everyone can gather and mm. work yeah. productively. Yeah. 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 I mean it's always nice to just be able to sit around with your colleagues also. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. 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 they can just like start <laughs> random conversations. Actually like creative work. Yeah. yeah. It is really hard <clears throat> to come up with good ideas when you're all working remotely. Correct. Like, as yeah. demonstrated with C V yes. <laughs> with us as well. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So why why did you choose a co working space instead of like a like a renting out your own office mm. space? Mm, I think okay, so I definitely considered mm. and looked around uh, quite long to find like a good office space. But considering the size of my team, it's usually like hovering three to five people. Mm. And because uh you know, some of them are interns, they, they come and go after a few months, you know, once their internship is over. Um, like with the budget that I had, mm. you know, it's I, I couldn't find a big enough space. Yeah, so I could only afford like maybe a small little desk area in a mostly secluded location. Right. Yeah, so considering, okay, for some reason, uh, I always attract girls. La. I, I think maybe because of the type of content that I do, mm. like very beauty related, very fashion girly things. So a lot of, most of the people that we hire are girls and have mm. been traditionally girls for some reason. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah, so that's why I also considered like their safety. You know, if right. I were to rent a place that wasn't that near the MRT station or that central, mm. it would be quite dangerous for them to go home. Mm. Uh, and of course, the, the good thing about having, you know, working in a co-working space is that you get to share the facilities and the amenities mm, and true. you share the cost as well. So yeah, yeah it's it's... It's been working out great <coughs> la, for mm. us that way. Mm. Mm. And we're very centrally located. <laughs> so, um, circling back to the like the income part of your job, okay. and because we're talking about co-working spaces and like your budget, right? Um, do you ever feel like as an influencer, you're kind of like trading your privacy for money? Mm, very deep question. 
I think for me, no, because it happened so gradually. Like, mm-hmm. I mean, I didn't like become an influencer overnight. Yeah. You know, it started off with online modeling and then mm-hmm. everyone had an Instagram account. So yeah. it's already part of our lifestyle to be sharing online, mm-hmm. especially in this day and age, la, especially among my friends or so. Mm-hmm. So for me, sharing about my life was a super like second nature kind of thing. Right. Mm-hmm. And uh, that's when, then it became like, okay, brands wanted to be on board. Mm. Brands wanted to send things for me to share and recommend them. Uh, so, <clears throat> I would say no, like to, 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 to put it as like trading your privacy for money is a little bit extreme. Yeah. But of course, there will have to be some trade-offs lah, because uh, that way then whoever I post will be kind of subjected to the same public eye. Right. right. Yeah, and uh, but I always believe that it still is up to the influencer whether or not he or she wants to post, you know, mm-hmm. things that he or she don't want other people mm. to know. Yeah, so you yeah. still ultimately have the final say of what right. you put online. Yeah. yeah. But of course you have to be a lot more careful mm. with your words or the things that you post la, because it holds a lot more weight now. Mm. Yeah. Oh, mm. it sounds a bit stressful. I mean, for, for a normal person like me who's not used to it, like, I can mm. just <laughs> anyhow post stuff yeah. on my own pri- <clears throat> in my own private account, of course. Not on the TSS account. Later, I see AY got selfie. <laughs> <laughs> Are you having a... Oh, yeah, I don't know if Friday. Are you having a fin fit Friday? <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I'm so good with the hashtag Chris. Anyway, <laughs> sounds yeah. like you should be part no, of the. No, no, no. Can I, can I, can I? I already got cancelled today. <laughs> <laughs> it's okay. Yeah. yeah. Um. So while well, we're still on the topic of income and stuff yeah. like that, so I think you mentioned before in an article that, uh, you don't make money. Like we don't. The quote was, "We don't make money off our boyfriends." <laughs> I would like to let's explore that a little bit. Yeah. <laughs> um, okay. Yeah. I, I mean, my question is mainly like. Uh, like why is it because they're not willing or? right right oh mm. the question is why uh? right. or, wh- or how did that quote come about uh, okay let's start with how okay, okay. Yes. Yeah. so uh, I think that quote came about because uh, a particular media company actually published an article about I think it was a satire mm. yeah a satire piece about how influencers I can't remember exactly but how influencers would uh, use their boyfriends as props to okay. you know, like uh, kind of propel their 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 fame or like mm. kind of use make right. money la, make uh, money yeah. okay. off okay. of the whole love idea mm. of right. like having a boyfriend. So the term they use was boyfriend prop or influencer boyfriend prop or wow. something like that. Okay. Okay. Yeah. So even though I was not mentioned in the article, my face with my husband, who was my boyfriend then, was the thumbnail. Eh. Huh? Eh? Then they never what? inaccurate. <laughs> so that was that was yeah. why. Um, that quote came about because when we did a follow up interview, so they they contacted me to to ask to interview me about something else. Mm. So that was when I was just like, okay, you know what? This is the time to mm. kind of like speak with them and and kind of make it clear that like yeah. <laughs> you know like I don't I don't see my boyfriend as a prop yes. and it's never my intention. And in fact, I always try to avoid uh, making him seem or feel like a prop to me, mm-hmm. you know, and, and and I felt like it was a bit not cool, like, yeah. to, to be using the photo like that. Yeah. Yeah, you know, and a little bit clickbaity, if I have to, <clears throat> if I must say lah, but, uh, but they were very kind enough to, you know, kind of still publish my side of this, my side of the story, even though it was not, not really a big deal. Mm-hmm. Yeah, because yeah. I was not in the article <clears throat> anyway. Yeah. So, yeah, that was how that quote came about. Right, okay. Uh, but okay. why... I don't use my boyfriend as a prop. Okay, number one, <laughs> it's because he's very busy. Yeah, yeah and um, he works in a finance industry. So mm-hmm. most of the time, I think it's not that favorable if they are always like parading around online, mm-hmm. like with their other halves. Yeah. I mean, I can't say on behalf of every couple, but at least for him, he's he doesn't want to be always on my on my profile la. Yeah. Yeah, yeah yeah which is fair yeah, yeah and he's quite fair. a shy person very low profile mm. so mm. it's just not in his nature yeah mm. to, to do it la. yeah, yeah. Mm. that's fair oh, yeah. yeah 
Like, mm. No other reason apart from that lah. Yeah, uh. it's just like he he just wants to be low profile. <laughs> yeah. yeah, and you're yeah. yeah respecting his choices. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Mm. But I I did tell him. I mean, we have been together for so many years, right? Yeah. So since the very beginning, when he saw that I was like modeling and everything, like there's no I was already sharing about my boyfriend to my friends. So there's no way I can like hide all these mm-hmm. things, you know. So yeah. yeah, he was okay with that. But it's more of like. You know, if a brand, if a lot of brands come forward and say like, I want your boyfriend to be part of the shoot, mm. like, mm. all the time, then right. then it's a little bit difficult for him lah. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. 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 True. Mm. That's fair. Yeah, I mean, in a way, he also didn't ask for... Yeah. yeah. To be like, uh, in front of the camera and everything. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Not talking about brands asking your boyfriend to be in the, ad, in the mm. branded uh, content and stuff. I think... Uh, Plus, you have kind of have your own team, right? Mm. Like, what's the challenges and like, what's the perks, I guess, of being in a creative agency? Uh, if I could call it a creative okay. agency. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I mean, of course, challenges would be staying creative. Yeah. You know, like, I think that's what you hear all mm. the time about, like, people who are in the creative yeah. field. Mm. It's because it's, it's, it doesn't come to us every single day. And, like, but yet we have to be creating content every single day. Mm. So, yeah. definitely, staying creative is, like, one of the biggest challenges. Yeah. Um, you know, of course, balancing the unstable income streams mm. because you don't know when you're going to have a high or a, lo- a low period. Yeah. You can never fully foresee that. So, uh, it's more about, like, kind of making sure that you're... Yeah, you have a good foundation mm-hmm. all the time. Uh, of course, you know, having to deal with all the admin work yourself and <laughs> chasing mm-hmm. for payments. Oh, yeah. yeah, like yeah. doing the bad job. La. Yeah. yeah. Mm. Like, you have to be it. your own HR. Correct, <laughs> correct. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Uh, of course, benefits got a lot. La. I mean, mm. this started out as my passion and my hobby, mm. right? And then being able to call your passion or your hobby a job is mm. really a super huge blessing. I, I don't... Yeah, I would say I really have the best job in the world. Yeah. Mm. So it really is, you know, one of the biggest perks. And of course, you know, flexible schedules. Yeah. Um, and you have like nice things, you know, you get to have <laughs> your hair done. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yes. And like you work with like brands that you've always, you know, dream of working mm. with. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So these are really the perks of the job. Go for mm. food tastings. That's really mm-hmm. nice. Sounds yeah. good. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so. How do you deal with um, burnout? Ooh, wow. Okay, so burnout. I try, I try my best not to get there. Lah, but yeah. uh, so in the past, whenever I did face that, um, thankfully, because we, we have this, occasionally we'll be like, okay, you know what, guys, let's just come up with like five video ideas each. Right. And then all of us will come up with it and then we'll have an archive. Mm -hmm. So when we have time, like during the low periods, that's when we will be working on all these organic content Mm -hmm. and then we'll be just storing it there. So on days where we don't have any uploads, then we'll just upload a video like that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so we usually have like a backup list of of videos or even Mm -hmm. ideas so that way when you are like super, like, you know, you really, really meet with like a creative block, right? Mm, you really yeah. cannot think of anything. At least you have that list to fall back on. Yeah. Yeah, that's so true. Yeah, I think burnout is kind of an inevitability uh, of like creative industry. Mm. Yeah, so I think having like planning for that is part of like setting up processes, yeah. which is something I guess is new when you're starting out a business as well. Lah. Mm. Yeah. Uh, maybe let's wrap up with one last uh, question. Okay. So it's about your finances. Oh. Yeah. Surprise. Yay. Surprise. <laughs> You're on a financial podcast. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, um, yeah, to close off, um, how mm. do you, do you have tips and tricks, best practices <laughs> for managing your finances? How do you, be, oh. how do you remain financially responsible? For me, yes. I mean, like I said, bottom line, don't spend more than what you earn. Mm. But if you are going to take a more like, extreme approach like mm. for me because I'm a very thrifty person right yes. so in the past uh, one way I would usually you know if I see something I really want and if it's something that's a little bit more expensive don't say like the $152 kind of thing mm. but like something a bit more sizable then I'll usually ask myself like is it a need or is it a want mm. and if it's a need then okay you know mm. but most of the time it's a want right mm-hmm. <laughs> so um, the first step is acknowledging it 
acknowledging that it is a want. Yeah. I think it's like you have to come to terms with it that <laughs> actually yes. it's just me. I Except want them. this thing. Yes. I don't need it. Yes. Yeah. So acknowledging it is is one thing, and then um then I'll ask myself like, how much utility will it bring me? You know, like and of course weighing it like with how much money I have to spend lah. How much money I have to spend, and how much more time I have to mm. spend earning that money back. Yes, right. correct. It's Versus important. like how happy it can make me. How much use am I gonna get out mm. of it, and everything. And you know, obviously, you try to balance it. Uh, and if it outweighs, then I will just buy it. Yeah. But sometimes a, a more practical, like okay, if I can quantify something, for example, if I see a Chanel bag, ten thousand mm. dollars. Example, example. And then I'll be like, okay, it's ten thousand dollars, but. If I buy it, will I be so happy that like it really brings me like ten thousand dollars worth of joy? Mm. Then I'll be like, okay, but I'm very happy to eat this Thai fun, right? Three dollars. Then I ten thousand divide by three. Wow, I can buy how many how many, how many Thai fun? <laughs> Would it make me happier than how many how many Thai fun, right? Yeah. Hmm, maybe not. Right. Uh, and if actually if the answer is yes, sometimes it really is a yes, right? Uh, then I will think like, okay, how. It, what's my goal? Am I gonna buy this back in two months, or is, am I gonna buy this back in five months? Mm. So if I choose, if I if I decide that I want to buy it in two months, they'll be like, okay, I need five thousand dollars of disposable income in the next two months, and the disposable income has to be status quo. Like there's no change on my lifestyle. Mm. I don't have to scrimp and save. Mm. Yeah. I don't have to cut back on any of my expenses yeah. or have to scramble and find money for rent or to pay my employees. You know, if everything status quo, I can make five thousand I have I find five thousand dollars of disposable income, then yeah, I'll buy in two months. Mm. Yeah. So it's like a very practical thought process. Yeah. Uh yeah. but yeah, so that's that's usually how I do it. And most of the time I'll just be like, okay, actually I realize it's not that worth it. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Oh. But, but I like that you're not depriving yourself. Like you're yeah. not scrimping and saving just for that. Because it is item. a it is a want. Yeah. 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 Right? So yeah. I shouldn't have to give up your sacrifice needs. my yeah, you exactly. know the necessity yeah. just to, to have that. Like yeah. Yeah, so thanks for coming on to the show. Thank you, know, you for having yeah, me. Yeah, it was very fun talking to you. Yeah, it yes. was super fun. Thank yes. you guys so much. Yeah. So if you guys want more, um, you know, just let us know. Bring yeah. on more influencers, we will. And I will embarrass myself continually. <laughs> <laughs> yes. That's Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. Oh my gosh, yes. yes. Yeah, correct. Thanks, yeah. everyone. Bye. Yeah. Bye. <laughs> Bye. Keep it simple. Keep it simple. Keep it simple.